Hey everyone, it's Erica. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm standing on my concrete slab. Uh, let me show you. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, but I wanted to show you because it's something that's really new in our lives. Um, we had concrete poured so that we could put down a pagoda in our yard and they ended up doing this really cool um, design in it. Ooh, so it's got like a big star. I thought that was fun. Anyway, I am back with more crafting content again because that's that's where my passion is right now, guys. Um, I did change my hair. I've got my, my Lily Monster stripes and my little white bangs. Um, but I'm not really in the mood to style it or set it right now, so I'm not. Um, I've been doing some pattern testing for Pattern Emporium again. That has just launched this week. Um, so I will be sharing on Instagram the two patterns that I made there. But I wanted to talk to you guys because it's August, the end of August. It's almost September. And on September 3rd, which is a few short days before my birthday, um, which is the 7th, Stephen West announces his new mystery long for a shawl for this year. So last year was my first year making uh, a mystery shawl with Stephen West and that was the shawlography, which I loved. I got amazing yarn for that and I was just 100% in. So I'm very excited about this year, but I feel like there's two projects that have been on my needles that I need to get off my needles before we cast on in October. So we find out all the information. I can buy yarn in September. Happy birthday to me. But I need some things off my needles before I feel comfortable casting on October 1st. So I'll show you the two projects that I am working on right now. And then I have something that's a new hobby that I'm kind of trying out. So still working on the Belladonna. This is in Cascade 220. It's in the colorway Mystic Purple. It's a top-down sweater by Andy Satterland. And I have done, and I'm doing the sleeves a little different because I like my sleeves to be really baggy and poofy. So I've got one full sleeve done, yes. And then I've got just about half of another sleeve. So once I do that, and I'll show you the whole sh the whole shebang of this sweater. So it's a crop sweater. It's got this great eyelet design through the back, through the front. Yes. Um, this is Cascade 20 220 Superwash, like I said, in the Mystic Purple color. Um, I'll probably have some yarn left over because I think I had four skeins. Yeah, four skeins. So I am on the third one and I've got this much of skein three and then I've got a full skein to do dropping everything. Got a full skein to do the button bands and finish the sleeve. So should be more than enough to remind you, I've got this to reinforce my button bands. It's purple bat ribbon. And then my buttons are going to be, so I'm gonna use the small ones or the big ones for this. Where are they? Where's the buttons? Oh, here we go. The buttons were these really cool um, mother of pearl, like kind of gray pearlescent vintage buttons. So that I think I can finish in the next week, I hope. And that will get that off the needles. And then I actually, so Stephen West released the shawl smorgasbord pattern, I think last month, which is a huge shawl with lots of different colors and textures and it's very eyelidy. So I thought I would show you guys my progress on that. Isn't that cool? So I've just done the large stripe, the second, well, the second small stripe. So now I'm going to start eyelet rows that are striped. Um, but yeah, this is quite a hefty project. So um, this may take some time. I probably will be casting this off 
at the wire at the end of September. But these are some of the colors I'm using. This is from Buxom Cat Knits. Um, this was from, I think, Yarn Lovin' Lady by Lisa. These are all Etsy yarns for the most part. Um, this one is from Haviland. It was one of the spooky slumber party uh, mystery skeins. I love this one, it's so fun. Um, it is right here and I'm getting ready to use it quite prominently in the next section. So I'm excited to do more of that. Um, this is also from Haviland. It's this blue right here. And then I've also got some Malabrigo to throw in here. Um, got this random dark blue, which I have no idea where it came from. And I don't know if I'll end up using it. Um, so yeah, but those are the main ones that I'm kind of focusing on right now. So that shawl is gigantic. Like I said, I'm only on like, I think the one, two, three, four. I'm going into the fifth section and it has a lot of sections. So we'll see how long it takes me to finish it, but I would like to have this shawl off the needles so I can use these needles to make whatever the next thing is. Pretty sure it'll probably be fingering weight. I don't think he's done one that wasn't. I could be wrong. Um, if it is a multicolored shawl, I would like to focus more on colors like maybe dark grays with like a pop of plum or mauve or something. That's kind of the color schemes I'm kind of into right now. Hard to tell from this crazy blue, but after doing such a bright one, I'm kind of ready for something a little bit more subdued. And then finally, I'm not a quilter, but I love quilting cotton. So, I have decided to learn <laughs> English paper piecing. Yes, I am doing English paper piecing and I've decided to do a Halloween quilt. So here's my first ever English paper piecing. Now, if you're not familiar with this is, you make these little hexagons by taking fabric and cutting out little pieces of cardboard, like a paper card stock. And then you cut out a hexagon that's bigger than the cardstock. And then you wrap it and tack sew it down. And then sew that around. And you get these little hexagons. And then you can put the hexagons together. Um, in the case of this one, I just did a center. And then there are six hexagons. And then on the back, you can see I've taken out this inside bit. All these are without the paper um, and the outside ones still have their paper. And I do that until I'm ready to sew the outside ones together. And the idea is I think I'm going to make like blocks out of it. So I'll t cut out a, I think a 12 inch block and then I'll applique this down to it. And I might try quilt as you go where you quilt the blocks, like put the batting and the backing and the whole thing on the blocks as you do it, as you sew it together. Like I said, I have no idea how to quilt. I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos and uh, learned English paper piecing. So um, yeah, I'm enjoying this so much. Um, I've got this next one started, so cute. And then the outside ring of that is gonna be this fabric. But I'll show you some of my Halloween fabric collection here. I've got spider webs. These are all just kind of scraps. I've got this sort of modeled black, which I think is gonna be my backing. I have big pieces of this. I think I'm gonna use that as backing for the flowers. So that'll be fun. Um, I got some extra stuff on Etsy, so I don't just have scraps now. Went a little ham and got some more of this stuff to play with because this is fun. And I don't sew with woven fabric very often. So it was a great opportunity to play with some of those woven fabrics. This is ancient Alexander Henry large uh, yardage. So I can use some of them for that. Some of these hexes are that fabric. So that's really fun. 
Um, I've got these little pumpkins with brooms. I've got this lime green, which is kind of pretty. Um, it's yellow I don't think I'm gonna use. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've got spider webs and orange. I've got, this is so fun. I love the idea of Fussy cutting out some of those monsters. Um, I got spooky kitties, witch silhouettes, <laughs> Dracula. This little pattern, we got purple witches, we've got Haunted houses and ghost friends. So cute. I love the mummies. They might be my favorite. I've got witches and trees. And then I've got kitties and pumpkins. So yeah, I will definitely keep you guys posted because this is hand stitching. I can just do like a couple hexes on a day or something. And uh, it's a nice slow project. Um, that's a nice break from knitting when my hands get tired of that. I can do this and vice versa. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. I hope that this was entertaining for you guys. If you have any tips, tricks, and expertise for me about English paper piecing, put it down below. I want to know because this, like I said, is new to me and I'm trying to do it without spending too much money on equipment or supplies. But um, I do love the idea of having a Halloween quilt for like our couch or something like that. Because um, spooky all year. All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.